I figured you'd have the gold box sold. I've had a couple people interested. Their credit just hadn't been uh, just there yet. So, uh, with, I mean, I've got another box coming, but I don't have one at the house right now. So, it beats having well, a hole there for now. It's nice. Which now we also had a uh, we had our district meeting Saturday, so we've got some of the meeting product up there. Um, that's what our goal to this week was to show off the meeting product and stuff like that. Uh, so that's the that's the tools that we're showing this week to everybody, which we've had a really good. Um, we had the meeting Saturday, so I didn't really get it till Wednesday, but. Um, yesterday was the first day on the truck with it. Everybody really liked all the new, all the you know, meeting products. So cool. Uh, we got the black and blue ratchets, uh, black and green, black and red, black and orange. Everybody really likes that black uh, on the on the colored handles. So, mm -hmm. and then we have our extractor sockets was on sale, which we all know if we need those, we're probably not in a very good mood. Yeah. We had some pliers on sale. What are those? Eight to nineteen on those? Yeah, I believe so. Let's see right here. Yeah, my, uh, well, yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's a six on. Uh, Holy cow! Six to nineteen. Oh, that's pretty good. We had some Silver Eagle sets is on sale, which is pretty important because there's a lot of people that think we don't carry these anymore. Mm -hmm. We do. Uh, I had a guy just last Friday say that he wishes we still had them, so he'll be real surprised when I show him. <laughs> And then we had, I bought these, I've never really gave these a shot. Uh, and the reason I didn't, I've got the metric one here somewhere too, um, because I normally kept, carried the big one. Well, I hadn't been able to get the big one in a while. That's one reason I gave this a shot. But also, mm -hmm. I'm finding more and more people that they don't need both met metric and standard is what they say, I don't know. And, and I can see that, because I don't think I've really jumped into both sides all the time with mine. but. I like the fact that it has the ratchet and set, uh, the handle, but it also has uh, it in a nice little carry case. So this is a good can carry it with you. Right. Especially the ones that's really been interested in it right now is my Rotex, the ones that have limited space in their truck. Mm -hmm. They said that they can put this and the metric set in there and then it's quick, fast, and in a hurry. So we'll actually open it up and look at this. But then we also had our green pliers, our four piece pliers on sale. And we also have the orange ones in the same style on sale as well. So cool. be able to offer some people some pretty good deals this upcoming week. Um, it was really nice to be able to order something at a meeting and get it that next, you know, that week. <laughs> it, that was nice. So y'all about caught up on the back order stuff? Well, we were catching up at a pretty good rate. Um, we did get told at our meeting that it's just to slow back down. Um, they're projecting that it from 30 days from delivery to get to us to go up to like 90. So, and I don't know what all product that's on or what all that's on, but they are telling us that there will be some more back orders. So, yeah. but I, I think everybody everywhere is getting tired of going into the grocery store and not having nothing or going in the tool truck and not having nothing. So I think everybody's trying their best to catch up and do what they can to make it right. But True. I uh, I wanted to give it a try. Everybody's been asking me about well, it. Well, I've seen, like, I seen a guy had one last week. I want to look at those when we're done with that, because those are pretty cool. Yeah, that's right another there. thing I wanted to show. I've been <clears> showing it a lot. Uh, I ain't got it down just yet, but I'll figure it out. But this is this set here. I like the fact that it comes with this, and the reason that I like that is because once you use these a whole lot, yeah. the numbers are going to wear off. Them anymore. And then you're basically taking a bolt over there and trying to figure mm -hmm. it out. Um, so, I mean, I know that don't mean much to some people, but it says keep for future rep part number reference. I think that's strictly for the tool guy because right. they know we're going to be looking at it like, eh, we'll figure it out. But, but I always like this. I like the fact that it, it ratchets instead of just being the style that you spin. Mm -hmm. I like the ratcheting spot because sometimes you don't have very much room. Right. Uh, and most of the time the bolt that strips out or that was stripped out when you got it was in the worst possible spot. So. Absolutely. And of course, they're not going to fix it. They're just going to, you know, run it all the way in for you later. But and then it comes with the the measure set here. This is important too because unless you're really really good at it, I can't I can't just look at a bolt and say, well, that's a blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. So 
that comes important. And I, and I see a lot of, or uh, well, I used to see, I used to see a lot of the new techs, they would never use this. They would just bring it over here and see which Stick one, it it would, in, yeah. which one goes best. Well, eh, <clears throat> you know, we're using that because that hole's messed up. So, <laughs> uh, but I like it. I like how small it is. I'll get you an overall normal price for it. And then, So normally it runs online for $189.95. I'm going to have it a little cheaper because I bought it at a sale. So uh, it, it'll be, I think it's going to go over well. Like I said, I've had a lot of interest in it from my techs that are over the road and stuff like that. Right. I have a lot of people that uh, even that work at tractor shops and stuff like that. I about threw that away. That wouldn't be smart. That, uh, I've been really interested in it. I was trying to see what we had a book for, instruction book or something, I guess. If you're needing that, you probably don't need me. <laughs> That's true. You well, ain't found nothing yet? I don't know. I see lots of stuff. Lots of stuff I like to get. Well, just load it up, man. I know. I should. Just open your car door and I'll start putting stuff in there. There you go. Just back your truck over here and every empty hole you find, he'll stick something in it. That's what I need to do. That's the way to do it. Get some of that Andy money. <laughs> you gotta share, man. Come on now. I know. Alright, so this is a cool new product right here. Streamlight Wedge. I like the fact of how small it is. I know that the little pin lights are just as small. But I also like the fact that it has some grip for your hand. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see you putting this one in your mouth. I know that's the number one go-to on the little round stream lights. But, and I like the trigger. And it does, when you hold it, it goes to a thousand lumens. And when you let off of it, it goes back. I haven't, I haven't read up on it or um, even played with it enough to know if you can keep it on the thousand lumens. Do you know that? I don't know. Them? Like I just seen this guy had one that came here. Yeah. I, it out. I was like, what is that? And he said, that's the new wedge streamlight. I was like, cool. It stays on at a constant 300. And when you push it forward, it's at a thousand, which I kind of like because you'll run that batter down a lot quicker on a oh, thousand. Yeah. But when you want a thousand, you need to be able to get it right. Mm -hmm. We've always said there's, um, well, you've always said there's never a big never much light. If it was burning a hole in that carpet over there on the wall, it wouldn't be it wouldn't right. be enough lumens. But I also like to switch, and the reason I like to switch is because the number one thing to usually go out on the other ones is that push button. It's switch. the push button, yeah. and, and what happens is you end up uh, pushing it and pushing it and pushing it, and it, but I've never tied it directly to. Some people say it's because they put them in their mouth and the water and the moisture. I kind of call bull crap on that because usually you can take the spring and pull it back out a little bit and it'll start working for a little while longer and then it keeps doing it and it just gets worse and worse. Mm -hmm. um, which they do sell end caps for the non-rechargeable but from what I've experienced they don't sell the end caps for the rechargeable. Um, which you know I'm not saying that that's the only problem out of them because they do have sometimes that the LED will start flickering and stuff like that but it does have a lifetime warranty so I'm right. not going to gripe about it. But good feel it does have the little strap that goes on it um, to keep it where it won't fall off your wrist and stuff like that i guess if you were walking through the woods or something that would be important working on cars i don't well i noticed in the back of it it's got usb c charging yeah which is like that's what everybody should go to and get away from that micro USB or ain't it micro Andy the little beady like the Samsung charger used to be yeah man those suck so bad yeah well I think everybody should have their own charger anyway and the reason I say that is because just yesterday my phone died and I could not well I say I couldn't apparently I had one um but I, I opened like four or five different things just to get the charger out of them and every one of them was different and I was come on now I wish everybody would move to that USB-C and just leave it the crap alone. That know? is what phones are going to, right? They're going to that USB-C. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, that's what mine's got. So I had one and didn't even realize it. But I See, like, even my new uh, 
iPad Pro, it's USB C. So yeah. that's nice, man. I like it. But here, put it in your hand, feel it. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to worry about which way it's flipped or. Because what kills me about a USB, I don't know, even like a regular USB, you plug it in, it won't work. Flip it over, plug it in, it won't work. Flip it over, plug it in, and it'll work that time. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. It's just weird. Well, my kids are hard on chargers anyway, but they seem the C's seem to last a lot longer around my house and the object that they're trying to charge. And the main reason is on some of those chargers, um, especially on the Android phone a couple of years ago, it had one way to go in. Yep. And they would always try to shove that thing in the wrong way and end up either A, bending a little prong on the charger, and I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many chargers we got broke because of that, but. Um, I like the way it's flat, and that way you can lay it down well, and it don't roll off. Well, that's what I said. I, I don't know why I like the shape of that flashlight so much, but in this situation, I don't really care why I like it. I just like it. Yep. It feels good. Oh. I like the, like he was saying, he liked it in his pocket better. It fit in his pocket better, you know. Yeah. So if, if you're into higher, excuse me, higher end knives, it, it reminds me a lot of the Microtech knives, specifically the Halo, which is an out the front knife. Um, just by the way that the body is shaped, with, especially with like the finger grooves and stuff in it. And, uh, it, that, that's really a cool design, and is you don't really see a flat knife, flat flashlight that you can just slip into your pocket like that. Well, no, and, and I think it's mainly because of the batteries are normally round, so they just always made flashlights mm, round. But true. that's not always that's and not that always the best. I mean, battery packs in there. See, Andy's like a ninja. He's like a knife guy. He <laughs> said they'll never run out of bullets and never jam. Yeah, but cool I, might, though, ain't it? I yeah. may not want to be close enough to have to use a knife. Well, I guess if you're good at throwing them, I don't want to. Andy I said can't... it'll look like a Sanger sewing machine got a hold of it when uh, he gets done. Uh -huh. There's yeah. holes poking everywhere. Yeah, yeah. That'd be, be leaking my, like that'd a sprinkler. That'd be on my hand. That'd be on my hand because you know, I'm just like, end up attacking myself with it. Be leaking like a sprinkler. <clears throat> well, that's some Which, cool tools, man. This thing is also uh, IP7 uh, waterproof, uh, IPX7 waterproof. Um, I've never been into the whole waterproof thing because it says one meter down. I guess that's how I, I don't know. I've never quite studied up on that and understand. But well, what's yeah. the prices on those? Let me look it up and see. Ooh, that's bad when he has to go to the computer and look it up. Well, I I spit out a price one time to a customer and it was about mm, $45 off and I said, yeah, I won't do that again. <laughs> so I just always go back and look now. <coughs> You know what I think would help every tool truck in America sell tools? What's that? Because I know it's Andy's looking at stuff now. They should put stickers on here with the prices. Because, like, it's a customer. Yeah. <clears throat> now, I'm not saying your stuff is too expensive, but I've been burnt before on some tool trucks where I'm like, ooh, I want that. And you set it up there. And when you walk off, because you didn't ask the price, have you ever been here, Andy? And then you're like, holy shit! I had no idea that was that expensive. But you know, like, say I pick something up and I saw the price on it. Let's just say it said 200 bucks. And I look at that and go, eh. But I take it up to Michael and I say, how much is that? And he goes, he goes well, you know, normally it's 249 I got it on special for 200 bucks. You're going to be like, oh, there we go. And... You know, even if he's playing psychological tricks on me by telling me it's normally two forty nine, when normally it's actually one seventy nine, he marked it up to two hundred. So you, so you just hit it on the head, and not with me playing games. That's the main. We have the capability. It's it's really aggravating, but we have the capability of printing out labels with prices on them. Mm -hmm. But the main reason we don't, or I don't, I don't know why the others don't. But the main reason I don't is because that's exactly right. The first thing that's going to happen if somebody looks at something. Say a set of screwdrivers. Those things usually show the list for 257, 260. You're gonna pick it up and you're gonna go nah and walk away. But you're never gonna ask me if I got it on sale, if it's on a promo, if it's a buy one, get one. It, it's not gonna be there. Well the thing is like what I hate doing is like, hey man, how much are these? 
Yeah, and then how hey much man, how much are these? Yeah, I hey see man, both how much sides are these? Of both. You know, I mean, I do. I see both like, sides, but I know if I had a tool truck, I'd put a sticker on there and be like, list price two fifty nine. Put me a slash through it and be like, you know, well, two hundred. <laughs> <whatever, you know. laughs> well, and that's the thing. I mean, it changes so much because Maco does different deals and stuff like that, but. I may try to figure out a way to do that, but the main thing is I want the customers asking me, you know, what's the sales price and stuff like that. That way I can try to give them a big deal. Cause like I said, a couple of videos ago, I've got now to where I try to buy most of my inventory on sale. Mm -hmm. That way when, cause there is times that people come on here and they pick it up and they bring it up here and they don't even care what the price is. And it's like, Hey man, this is normally this and I'm going to give it to you for this. Oh wow. I saw it online for that. And I just, I yeah. talked myself into buying it finally. And I'm like, well, I'm going to give you a better deal cause I bought it on deal. Well, I know the day I rode with uh, the Mac guy and did the day in the life of the Mac tool truck guy, <clears throat> there was one shop that had like eight people got on the truck at one time. And like this guy's like, how much is this? How much is this? Another guy, how much is this? How much is this? Kind of thing. And then finally all of those people got off the truck. And uh, the last guy, he said, man, I wanted to buy that, but I don't, you know, I didn't want to ask how much it was. There's so many people on here and blah, blah, blah. He's like, well, I'll look it up for you. He said, nah, I'll worry about it next week. Yeah. Well, and I try to keep that from happening by simply knowing uh, what most of my prices are. But yeah, I, I understand because I'm the same way. I like to know uh, when I go into a store how much it is. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if I got to walk all around that store and then back up to the front to price check it or something. Yeah. I, I'll usually just say screw it and go on. So that, that I mean, I'm going to take that as an idea and see if I can. Figure out a way I to mean, make I it wouldn't work. price everything, but you know, a lot of stuff. Maybe the most commonly asked stuff yeah. like that, and maybe oh, yeah. even find a way to put, uh, mm -hmm. you know, ask me about the sales price or something on there too. That way, they can see how much it normally is. It's on a sticker. There's no way he's just making this up on the top of right. his head. Because right. I do have that sometimes, where it's like, are you sure it's really on sale? And it's like, yeah, it's going to mm -hmm. show you on your receipt that you saved this much money. Well, most tool trucks that I've always been on is always like. Well, it's three twenty nine, but I got it on special this week for you know. Yeah. It's always that same thing. So guys, that's been on tool trucks, and I know you was the same way when you was a tech. He's probably yeah, I'm sure it's really on sale. You know. I have felt that way. I have. Uh, Everything's always on sale. Yeah. So. Well. Yeah, but and that's the that's the customer relations part that I try to grow with my with my techs. Right. I try to make them you know, trust me enough and, mm -hmm. and show them that they can trust me enough that they know. And most of the time that's what they'll say, Hey, what's this on sale for? And yeah. it's like, okay, it's on sale for this. Yeah. And they'll bring it up here and they'll buy it. And then they'll look at the receipt and go, Holy crap, that thing was normally this. It's like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> I'm glad I asked for the sales price. It's like, well, I mean, you would have got it either way. Cause I'm not the type of guy. And I think a lot of the people that come to the meetup knows that. Yeah. Um, even if you don't ask for the sales price, when you look at your receipt, you're going to see that it's there. Just because you don't ask for it, don't mean I'm not going to give it to mm -hmm. you. Uh, if I give it to you, I'm going to give it to everybody that picks up that tool. Right. Uh, unless you're just one of these people that um, you have to be a pretty crappy person for me not to give you a deal. And I, I can honestly say I've never not gave somebody a deal. All right. But I mean, yeah. if you come on That's here, the and way to me, be. Yeah, I mean, if, if you come on here and was down in everything and told me I was trash and this, that, and another, and then ask a price, I may not want to sell to you at that point. But mm -hmm. I haven't ever had that happen. This normally online list for 157, but I can honestly say I'll never sell it for that. Uh, mine will always be cheaper, um, just because uh, if I can't get them on deal, I'm, I'm not going to sell for 157. I'm going to try to get it down closer to the 125, 130 range. Yeah, I say um, I'd be like, man, I'm just saying to have that 2020 is that you know? Yeah, for well, that money. And, and that's what know. I'm saying. I mean every truck's different mm -hmm. and i may not i might not be able to do that so you may never see these on the truck but if i can't get it on a good enough deal to where i feel comfortable with you buying it for that price i'm not gonna sell it to you for that so there you but go i'm gonna try to get it a lot cheaper and there's ways about it so i'm gonna, I'm gonna see what i can do and so next week guys we'll see the whole shelf full of those wedges up here. <laughs> <laughs> there'll be 60 of them well you know you see the the um stream light stream right lights there. back there yeah. i mean i said the same thing with them i priced them one time and they were super high and i was like nope and then finally a deal come along where i could sell them cheap cheap enough that i would be happy buying it and i said okay that's what i'll do there you go well, you gotta buy this many okay <laughs> well what colors i don't care send me a variety i want every color you got but, um 
I forgot where I was going, but yeah, uh, prices do vary. Between, I know I've said that a hundred times. Prices do vary, but uh, it's all about how many you can buy and what your territory will stand, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's guys out there who literally have now a whole truck of nothing but redbacks, it seems like. My territory won't support that. I do have a lot coming. I do have a lot here now, um, but I wouldn't, you know, it's, I may not be able to get the same deal because I can't purchase that much. Right. Also, recently found out on our welding helmets, I had a guy ask me, I'm not a welder by no means. Um, I can make it do the sparks and I can grind it down to make it look real pretty, but I'm not a welder by no means. And never knew that you could get magnifying lenses for those things. Hmm. We do offer magnifying lenses. That's it only cool. fits certain helmets. So if you're interest, interested in a magnifying lens, get with your dealer. There is several different options. I think it goes all the way from uh, like, uh, just let me look right quick. Oh, I'm not, I know it goes all the way up to two. We'll just say that, all the way up to two. So if that's something you're interested in, see if it fits yours. And I'm guessing that's for people who wear glasses normally and, and don't want to wear their glasses in there. I'm not really sure how that works. Mm, but I, I know, always wear mine under it, it never bothered me. Well, and we, we, have, <clears throat> uh, we have people that do that too. This is what uh, one of the ones I ordered looked like. This is for one of the smaller deals. I don't know what the newer ones look like. I've got some ordered for it, but I ain't got them. But it actually splits it just like the glasses does for your two eyes. Oh, like, yeah, bifocals. Yeah. Uh, and, and it may just be to give you a better better vision on it. I'm not I'm not 100% sure, but I thought that was pretty cool. And yep. for somebody that welds all the time and is not a grinder like me, they, they may need that. So There you go. <clears throat> All right, guys, like always, thanks for hanging out with us today. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up. Check over here for merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes that are down there. And if you're not subscribed, take your finger and click that button. Y'all have a great weekend. We will catch you later. See ya.